Comic Kid 84, and this is the return of the top 10 picks in the pass list for September 4th. Top 10 picks program is back, y'all. You know, after the community's been clamoring for the top 10 picks show to be back on the YouTube video scopes, and I had to oblige, man. Top 10 picks is back, and I'm coming at you. Uh, better than ever, right? <laughs> so, here we go. You know the drill. I'm going to let you know my personal top ten picks that are dropping. New comic book day. In this case, September 4th. I'm also going to let you know the pass list. The books that are going to stay on the rack. I'm not interested. And I'm going to let you know why. So, let's just kick this baby off, yeah? At number ten. Let me position myself. At number 10, something's killing the cheering. Something's killing the children. Number one, looks like it could be interesting. The Jenny Frizen cover, it's like the B cover. The Jenny Frizen cover is the one that caught my eye. Uh, I think this might be a good book to pick up. You know, it's a number one, so you never know. And it's pretty, pretty legit. Um, Jenny Frizen cover, the A cover didn't really do much for me, but this one did. So I'm intrigued, I'm interested, and that's my number 10 pick. Something's killing the children. Number 9. I'm going to go with the Web of Black Widow, number 1. Now, for one main reason, because normally this probably wouldn't be a book that I'd be particularly hyped for, but... Invisible Woman, that Invisible Woman solo run has been real good. Um, and I'm hoping this one's along the same vein because Black Widow is in that Invisible Woman miniseries. So I'm in the mood for, you know, a female protagonist spy action series. Invisible Woman got me, got me in that mode. So I want a little bit more of that Black Widow done right can be a legit character this cover is a few different variants as you would expect with the marvel number one there's like five or six different variants that you can take your pick from but this one is kind of that retro suit of our girl black widow so that's the one that's that's my pick right there um number eight admittedly this is a cover pick for your boy but number eight is Vampirella and Red Sonia, the In Hyakui cover. This thing is sweet, it's bad to the bone. They're doing the, this is like their formula, where they team up two properties. Usually two female characters, they mash them up in a book and put out cool covers, I guess. The reads are generally not great, but they've had every mashup from... Vampirella with Betty and Veronica and, you know, Red Sonia and Barbarella and this one and that one. They love mashing up female properties. And it looks like that's what they're doing here. I will say, of the little mashups that they've done, which have been kind of traditionally weak, Vampirella and Red Sonia is kind of a cool team-up. So, I guess I'd be interested to see what the read's about. But, it's about this cover, man. In Hyuk Lee is really killing that one. I met him at the Fan Expo. Good dude. Korean assassin with the pencil and paper. I saw him live doing his thing. Guy's a, guy's a masterful artist. And this cover uh, is an example of that. So boom, there's number eight. Uh, Vamp Red Sonia. Number seven. Punisher number 15. Dude. Um, I gotta admit, I read like the first few issues of this new Punisher run, and I fell off, right? Just didn't totally grab me. But when I saw this cover, I was like, oh, damn! You know, it did the job of a cover. The job of a cover is supposed to be, you see, you see the, the cover image and it makes you wonder, damn, that's cool looking, I wonder what's going on inside. And when you show me Punisher with this crew right here, Moon Knight, 
uh, Night Thrasher in the classic Night Thrasher outfit. Ghost Rider. Uh, I forget who else. I don't have it in front of me, but dude, it's a fire cover, but it's also letting me know that there's a pretty ill team up going on in that book that I'm very interested in seeing. So I'm going to jump back into Punisher. I'm going to read this issue and if it's doing it for me, I'm going to catch up on the story because uh, I'm usually into Punisher uh, series. So Punisher 15, I'm going to keep my eye out on that book right there. Uh, number six, Old Man Quill number nine. Old Man Quill, very solid run. Um, you know, I've, I've, this book has made the list in the past, in previous editions. Uh, it's a really solid run. Old Man Hawkeye is what bit me into this Old Man universe. I still, to this day, have not read Old Man Logan. From what I understand, it's worth reading. I need to get on that. But I like this world, this Old Man universe. Heroes are defeated. The villains have taken over. They're running the show. And it's the same writer that did Old Man Hawkeye. And Old Man Quill has been solid. It's, it's Quill uh, as an older man. Don't mind that. He links up with the Guardians of the Galaxy. He's back on Earth. It's going down. There's like a religious extremist group that's causing trouble. Uh, it's really good. It's really good. So number six is Old Man Quill number nine. Hiya. We're at the middle of the list. And you know what that means. It's time for the past list. So we got, a, we got a few books on the past list this week. First one up is this new series that's apparently launching this week. Batman vs. Ra's al Ghul. It's kind of an odd series, new series that I've seen pop up. Um, that title alone normally might pique my interest. It's written and drawn by Neil Adams. Now, you might say, oh, that's really cool. I'm glad that they're giving, you know, these cla these legendary artists their own book. And normally I would agree, because uh, it's always cool when you have an artist or, or someone doing the art and the writing, because it's their total vision, you know? A lot of times you'll get the best from that person. And you see it a lot of times in indies, and you don't see it that much in mainstream titles, Marvel and DC. So we're getting that, and we're getting a legendary dude like Neil Adams. But Neil Adams is best with the pen and the pencil, man. Because if you guys uh, are aware of one of his last Batman writing endeavor, which was Batman Odyssey, it was pretty bad. It's like universally panned as some pretty shitty writing. Uh, didn't really make a lot of sense. Neil Adams is not the greatest writer. And I'm suspect of this run, you know. Uh, so for that reason, I think I'm going to pass on Neil Adams, the writer, on this one. And it's not going to, it made the pass list this week. Uh, next up, Harley and Poison Ivy, number one. Now, I'm a fan of Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. I think they make a cool duo together. This book is apparently picking up after Heroes in Crisis. And it's the gals on a road trip. Now, I, in theory, like these two characters. And sometimes they're written cool. But for the most part, like, the Harley Quinn stories are just really goofy, silly, trying to be funny. And as you know, I'm not a big fan of... I am a big fan of comedy and humor, but comic writers trying to be funny is usually a fail. And I would expect nothing less from, from this book. Now, the cover... This would be a book that potentially would be like just a cover grab for me. And at first glance, it might seem like it, it would be. It's a cool art germ drawing. But I think this is a miss, too. Like, 
I'm not sure why exactly they laid it out like this. Uh, they're not connecting covers. It almost seems like they want to be connecting covers, but they're not. They don't. They don't connect. They kind of like overlap, I guess, but that's kind of stupid. And I think like the no-brainer would be just do one cover with just Harley on it, and that other cover with just Poison Ivy on it. They look strange. With if you just get one book, you got like the little piece of the other character on the side of the book. It looks stupid. Uh, I don't like this idea of like a halfway overlapping cover. Like I said, it's not even a connecting cover. So, not into it. Uh, and I'm sure the read's going to be uh, subpar. So, probably Quinn and I will make the, the next list, past list. <clears throat> next. Marvel Presents, number seven. I think this is like the second print. They're showcasing Wolverine's daughter on, on the cover here. Uh, I know there was some hype with this character. I heard she might not even be his daughter. I don't know the whole, the whole story. I didn't read it, but that just seems like a played out concept. Wolverine has had so many daughters already. You know, we of course have X-23. I remember that used to be that Wolverine's daughter from years back in like that Juggernaut Jr. book. Uh, Honey Badger is basically like a Wolverine daughter. It's like, dude, we've, we've been there. We don't need any more Wolverine daughters. Uh, it's like, she's like this blonde bombshell with electric claws or something. It's like, leave it alone. Wolverine don't need any more daughters. They gave him a son. He has Dakin as the son. It's like, children of Wolverine. I don't know why they insist. They don't do that with that many characters. Like, Captain America doesn't have like a son and daughter that they always bring out. Hulk, son. I don't know. It's For some reason, Wolverine... They just insist on giving this dude these sons and daughter characters, and we don't need any more. So, I'm all set. This character is not going to blow up, in my opinion, because it's not a fresh take. It's just going to be whatever. I, I don't think she's crossing over into other books. I don't know. Get out of here. Pass list on Presents number seven. I got two more on the pass list. The pass list is stacked, I'm sorry. Next on the pass, this one might come as a surprise to people, but Spawn 300. Spawn 300 is making my personal pass list. Um, I just feel like I don't read Spawn. I'm not the biggest Spawn fan. I respect the character. I think he's probably the biggest, pop, most prominent, independent character in the game. I feel like he established, you know, Image Comics is basically built on the back of Spawn. And I am a fan of Todd McFarlane, so I respect the character, but I don't read the book. And if I was to buy this Spawn 300, it would only be because I want to, you know, have this momentous book, this collector's item, da-da-da. And I don't think the book is going to be that. I think they're going to print the shit out of this book. I don't even know how many variants they're going to make. Um, the coolest one is probably the J. Scott Campbell. I do like the J. Scott Campbell. I was looking through the like the previews or the pre-orders, and it looked like most of the covers were cover price. Like this J. Scott Campbell, I think, is cover price. Even the Virgin variant, maybe it was like a couple dollars more, but nothing crazy. So I respect that. But I'm sure I'll be able to find this book down the road for half the cover price, or just at cover price a few years from now if I wanted to. I don't think it's you know, going to be like the ASM 300 uh, that maybe he's hoping it's going to be. But I'm personally going to pass on Spawn 300. <laughs> last, the last one on the pass list is these these Fantastic Four variants. These Immortal, Immortal Hulk variants with like the character's face morphing. I wasn't really a big fan of the original one, the Hulk one, that these are all swiping. and But at least it made sense. Because, like, Bruce Banner turns into the Hulk. So, like, you would get it that you have his face transforming from the back cover to the front cover. They're just doing it with every fucking character. Uh, Invisible Woman has this morphing cover. Human Torch has one. The Thing one looks awful. Looks bad. Um... 
they're doing it for all these characters. I saw Punisher had one. Uh, he doesn't morph into anything. Uh, all these characters are getting this immortal variant. It's a pass on all those variants for me. Um, the one that looks absolutely atrocious is this one. Look at this god-awful cover. The Mr. Fantastic one, this morphing face, is maybe the most trash thing I've seen. It might be the most trash drawing of Mr. Fantastic I've seen. Uh, it's just really, it looks like really basic amateur hour artwork. Um, the morph, he's not even morphing. You would think he's like stretchy so you could do something kind of unique with that. It just looks bad. So, pass list on those Fantastic Four variants. See you later. Back to the hot, the top list, number five. Now, in saying all that, Fantastic Four number 14 is, in fact, making the list at number five. Uh, the story's been good. The first, like, five-ish issues, I thought were thumbs down. I was like, oh, that's a bummer that it's not good. But it really picked up. Um, and I was shitting on those variants, but I gotta admit, that Doctor Doom one is pretty badass looking. So, I will concede that the Doctor Doom one is pretty legit. But that that's only an afterthought. Um, the story is, is why I think this one makes the top five on my list. So, Fantastic Four number 14. Number four. This one is kind of because of the story, but more so for the cover. Savage Avengers, number four. God, dog, dude. This David Finch cover is one of the dopest drawings, one of the coolest images I've seen in a long time. I think this cover is out of control, awesome. The composition of it is, is sick. Uh, you know, it feels like it could have just been a blank color background, but he's got like the the vertical lines going down, which helps the the composition of the whole thing. It's just crazy good. All the characters on it make a pretty badass team. So damn, I'm just gushing on that cover. Savage Avengers four is number four on the list. Bow. Number three, the top three are, are really solid books. Number three. Die is back, baby. Die number seven. Die is back from the hiatus. We're going into the second story arc. The number six was the first issue that came back last month after the hiatus. I thought it was solid. I thought it was very good. I'm hoping that it can keep the same momentum that it had in the first story arc. I'm, I'm just interested in seeing where this story goes. They seem to do interesting things as we build the story out. The art inside is, whoa, amazing. So, die number seven. These are, there's a lot of books that I pick up. <clears throat> there's a lot of books that I read on digital just to keep up with the story. But die is a book that I always pick up. Um, the hard copies. Here's the number six. So, number seven, dude, is on my list at number three. <laughs> Number two, number two, brother, some people might not agree with me, but it's my list. Number two is Doomsday Clock, man. Doomsday Clock, number 11. Gary Frank's art in this series, I think, is top shelf. I've heard some people criticize the art in this book. I think it's fantastic. I think it's high-level comic book art. The story has been awesome. You always, you know, I'm always worried when, uh, you know, this whole notion of like we're gonna bring the Watchmen into the into continuity and stuff. I was like, eh, be careful with that. But I think they're doing it very well. It seems like we're building up into this big standoff with Doctor Manhattan and Superman, which is, that alone is crazy. Um. You know, the big criticism of this book is the frequency at which it's been coming out. Granted, it comes out very sporadically, but you know what? I don't care. Uh, 
sometimes things take time to be good. As long as if the issues were coming out and they were lousy, I might be a little more salty about the time, but they're good. So it's all right. This is number 11 of 12. So this is the penultimate issue. And in TV shows, the penultimate episode, the one before the finale, is always where all the crazy shit goes down. And the big moments happen. And then the last, and the series finale kind of resolves everything. So that's what I'm expecting here. Penultimate issue, big shit's going to go down, and issue 12 is going to uh, conclude. Bang. All right, number one, it's House of X. It's House of X number four. It's got to be. The X-Men is back. This is what I've been wanting for a long time. X-Men to have a solid run. I would have just been happy with it being a good read. But this Hickman X-Men run is the best read on the stands. So I'm I'm pumped. He, he over-delivered for me. I think this is a great series. I don't think the covers are particularly hot, you know. I guess that's a little disappointing. It would have been nice to see, like, really killer covers on all these books. They're kind of so-so, but I don't care, man. The art inside is very is solid, great. And the writing is excellent. Everything's cool. House of X, Powers of X. So I'm not really going to worry about it too much, about the, the covers being kind of mediocre. So, boom. House of X, number one. Number four is number one on the list. There you have it. Top ten picks is back, baby. Stay tuned. Uh, and do me a favor and subscribe to the Comic Heads channel. I can't go live on this. I'm still on live lockdown. YouTube has got me locked down. But the Comic Heads channel, the team up of myself and my buddy Basco, is where the live shows are going down. He has also his favorite picks uh, of the week as well. So check out his list. And it's just, you know, subscribe there. This show might eventually move there. I don't know. But I'm definitely putting out content there. So if you enjoy this show and you want more 84 content, it's, it's happening on the Comic Heads channel. Okay, that's it. Thank you for stopping by. See you later. Bye.